So what do you think about the expansion, not through the biology side, but through the BCI, the brain computer interfaces? Yeah, you got a chance to check out the Neuralink stuff. It's super interesting. Like like humans like like our thoughts to manifest as action. You know, like like as a kid, you know, like shooting a rifle was super fun, driving a mini bike, doing things. Mm-hmm. And then computer games, I think, for a lot of kids became the thing where they you know, they can do what they want. They can fly a plane, they can do this, they can do this, right? But you have to have this physical interaction. Now imagine you know, you could just imagine stuff and it happens, right? Like really richly and interestingly. Like we kind of do that when we dream. Like dream, dreams are funny because like if you have some control or awareness in your dreams, like it's very realistic looking or not realistic, it depends on the dream, but you can also manipulate that. And, you know, what what's possible there is, it's, it's odd, and the fact that nobody understands it's hilarious. But um, do you think it's possible to expand that capability through computing? Sure. Is there some interesting? So, from a hardware designer perspective, is there? Do you think it'll present totally new challenges in the kind of hardware that required? That like, so this hardware isn't standalone computing. Well, this this it's networking take it from with this, the brain. So today, computer games are rendered by GPUs. Right. Right. So. But you've seen the GAN stuff, yeah, right? Where trained neural networks re- render realistic images, but there's no pixels, no triangles, no shaders, no light maps, no nothing. Mm-hmm. So the future of graphics is probably AI, right? Yes. Now that AI is heavily trained by lots of real data, right? So if you have an interface with a AI renderer, right? So if you say render a cat, it won't say, well, how tall is the cat and how big, you know, it'll render a cat. And you might say, mm-hmm. well, a little bigger, a little smaller, you know, mm-hmm. make it a tabby, shorter hair. You know, like you could tweak it. Like the, the amount of data you'll have to send to interact with a very powerful AI renderer could be low. But the question is, well, brain-computer interfaces would need to render not onto a screen, but render onto the brain. And... Like directly, so that there's a bandwidth. Well, it could do it both ways. I mean, our eyes are really good sensors. It could render onto a screen, and we could feel like we're participating in it. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna have, you know, like the Oculus kind of stuff. It's going to be so good when it projections in your eyes, you think it's real. You know, they're they're slowly solving those problems, yeah. and I suspect when the renderer of that information into your head is also AI mediated. Either they'll be able to give you the cues that you know you really want for depth and all kinds of stuff. Like your 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 brain is partly faking your your visual field, right? Like your eyes are twitching around, but you don't notice that. Occasionally they blank, you don't notice that. You know, there's all kinds of things like you think you see over here, but you, you don't, don't really see there. Yeah, it's all fabricated. Yeah. So yeah, peripheral vision is fascinating. <laughs> so if you have a, an AI renderer that's trained to understand exactly how you see and the kind of things that enhance the realism of the experience, could be super real, actually. So I don't, I don't know what the limits to that are. But obviously, if if we have a brain interface that goes in inside your you know visual cortex in a better way than your eyes do, which is possible, it's a lot of neurons. Yeah. Um, maybe that'll be even cooler. 